First thing we'll talk about is electrical because in most cases you are going to want to run power to your greenhouse. Uh, a single 120 volt line is, the, is going to be a minimum. The uh, most greenhouses will really benefit from running a 240 line to your greenhouse. And it sounds like a lot, why would I need 240? Well, your heater takes half of the, half of the voltage of that 220. And if you want to run lights or heat mats, uh, exhaust fan, uh, you need more than a, a single 120 line. If you run two 120 lines, you might as well run a 240. Mm -hmm. So the idea is to run a 240 line to your greenhouse, put a little mini circuit breaker panel in there and split it. Maybe you'll want to, if it's a bigger greenhouse, you'll want to run a 240 line out for a heater outlet in the greenhouse. And so that's what I've got in my greenhouse. I've got an outlet for 240, but then the line is split and goes to 120 for the outlets, the lights, the heat mats, and the air circulation fan. So uh, ask your electrician uh, what they advise. Depends what your, where your circuit panel is in the house or where the power is available. First time we hooked it up, it, they hooked it up to a bathroom circuit. Well, it turned out if the heater was on in the greenhouse and my wife used a hairdryer, boom, the circuit went off. So make sure you get isolated. Uh, uh, circuit so that you can keep your power on in the greenhouse. Uh, one thing you want to be aware of in the greenhouse is uh, water and electricity don't mix. So you want to make sure your greenhouse is well grounded in case there is uh, electrical leakage in any of your uh, uh, wiring. Now your circuit breakers don't protect you from a shock, but a ground fault circuit interrupter does. And there's different grades of those. You can have them put in, you know, you see them in the bathrooms with a little red button on them. So you need to have that, at least one of those, protecting the line in your greenhouse wherever you plug in lights or heat mats or whatever. You, uh, failing to have a built-in one, you can use a portable and plug your electronic uh, equipment into one of these. So that's another option. I'm kind of reminded of the time I did a little electrical job and I got it all hooked up. I turned on the light switch and the toilet flushed. So anyway, <laughs> really me a few Sounds like he was on a boat though, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so when, when your electrician grounds your electrical system in the greenhouse, uh, we want to ground it twice, not just once. You want to ground it twice because if that first one fails, you still need to, for your protection, I have a second grounding line. Uh, I only had one in mine, and I learned the hard way. Uh, I went to grab, grab the door to leave the greenhouse, and it was hot. And the, uh, the ground, there was water in the system, and the connection to the grounding rod in the ground had corroded over the years and was not doing its job. So maybe if, if I had two, it still would have shocked me. But uh, anyway, make sure you're well grounded on your electrical system in the greenhouse. The question is, if you have an, a metal frame greenhouse, do you ground the metal frame? And it's a good idea to ground the metal frame separately. How, however, the electrician may tell you that the wiring, the conduit is attached to the frame, so you don't need to, all that's grounded, so you don't need to ground the conduits or, or ground the frame separately. But if you have any doubt, ground the frame as well. Because that was what I was grabbing onto, was the frame, the door. The grounding, the question is, does the grounding rod need to go in the greenhouse? It doesn't have to. It can be anywhere. And it's probably going to do a better job outside and the, with the wires buried. 